War Diary, Eastern Front, Part 6 With a broken hand, action in the tank is out of the question. Two weeks of light duty in the staff platoon is not so bad. I just hope my tank doesn't get hit by the Russians. At the moment, Ivan is laying everywhere with his field guns and fires from concealed positions into passing tanks. If they hit at the right spot, then it can go right through and ends badly. Two days ago we had to line up and I was awarded the Iron Cross together with a few other comrades. Of course it was a second class, but I was still pleased. This was for the two KV we took out with our PSW. The armored reconnaissance commander got the Iron Cross first class. He had also performed a few daredevil actions. Dashing fellow, said Willie, he likes to ride with these comrades. In the evening we celebrate our awards with a few schnapps. Service with staff platoon is good after all. The next days were marked by advance and by combat. Things are really get down to business and the Russians throw everything they have forward. Apparently Ivan is completely indifferent to both men and material. They prefer to be shot to death than to surrender. It is also becoming more and more common for the grenadiers to be shot in the back. The Russians play dead and then suddenly they grab their rifle and shoot at our soldiers when they have marched past. That's what a few slightly wounded soldiers I met at the dressing station told me. Now every Russian gets an extra shot for safety. Ones can never know. The T-34s are starting to worry us. We did not expect that. Good armor, good guns and mobility due to the wide tracks. So a well-balanced machine and not easy for our Panzer 2 and 3. Fortunately, the enemy have no radio and are really badly trained. One has the feeling then have a target to attack and just drive towards it regardless. A few days ago, four T-34s went through our armored spare point and instead of continuing to fight there, they drove on and on, without looking to the right or left. A flak unit with the 88s was hastily brought in and took them out from the flank. That took only minutes. They had no chance with that caliber, simply demolished the turrets. Two survivors were questions and said their only orders were to reach a specific point. Strange. The days drag on and my hand slowly becomes usable again. I get the order to drive back to the regimental command post together with Gefreiter Hübner. He is from the typing pool and we have to pick up important papers. Our advance routes stretch out and we have to watch out where we are going. We return with a BMW, me in the sidecar and Gefreiter Hübner is driving. Funny guy and despite the war we have a lot of laughs. We have to go through a forest and I hope that there are no partisans. We hear so many things. In the middle of the forest we find a Kübelwagen standing crosswise on the road. I grab the machine pistol and slowly we approach the car. Two soldiers in the car in a bad way. The Leutnant is dead but the Feldwebel is still breathing. Damn. Surely the Russians are still here. We turn off the engine and listen. Then there is a crack and a bullet whistles past my head. Hübner pulls the Feldwebel out of the car and tries to stop the bleeding. I aim the MP into the woods and let loose a burst. Ducking, I run a bit into the undergrowth and stop again. Close your eyes and just listen. There's another shot and I can tell the direction it came from. 
Another volley and zigzagging I run towards the spot. I throw myself behind a tree trunk and the bullets hit the wood. I roll to the side and see Hübner with a rifle and two hand grenades crawling towards me. More shots and this time very close. We pull out our hand grenades and throw. An explosion, then another and the screams of pain are heard. Now let's get at the enemy. We jump up and start running. In a hollow, two men are lying badly wounded and someone is running off through the undergrowth. Hübner takes his rifle and shots. The person goes down. In the corner of my eye, I see one of the injured enemy lifting something. I turn briefly and empty my magazine into that direction. Now the two are down. They look like peasants, but armed with rifle and pistol. So they are partisans. What a mess. We take the weapons and look for the third. In the thicket we find a woman, lying bleeding on the ground. We reload briefly, and then Hübner wants to turn her over. I stop him. Who knows if she still has a gun? In Russian, Hübner tells her to turn around. She supports herself and slowly stands up. The shot must have gone through her shoulder, and it's not easy for her to move. She is holding a knife in one hand, and I tell her to drop it. I look into her eyes and see nothing but hatred. Time passes in slow motion, and I notice how she tenses to attack me. She is still three paces away. At two paces I pull the trigger and fire a burst into her torso. She is thrown backwards and the blood spurts in all direction. She had her chance. We collect the knife and go back to the forest path. The Feldwebel is unceremoniously put in the sidecar and Hübner roars off. I stay with the Kübel until reinforcements arrive. Fuming, I look at my bandage splattered with blood and can hardly believe it. Now we are already have to fight against women. Where will it end? Damn partisans.